Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Dawn Evans. I'm the coordinator of the Access Text Network, and I'm so glad you could uh, set aside some time to join us. I think today's webinar on um, reading EPUB with dyslexia and learning disabilities is going to be fabulous and full of great information. So uh, on to the housekeeping. Um, there is live captioning available. Just click on the CC um, at the bottom, the closed caption logo at the bottom of your Zoom window. Um, and if you need to enlarge the captioning box, you can do so by clicking on the upward arrow in the top right corner of your captioning box. Today is going to be a 40 minute session and 20 minutes for questions, but we may shake that up a little bit. Uh, we will throw in a, a couple of your questions um, after um, each demo uh, so that we don't, um, because I think that will be helpful. You may have some pertinent questions that need to be answered in that moment. Um, so at any time, please do submit your questions using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Everyone should be able to see each other's questions and any typed answers. And right here we have a link to take you to Access Text's wiki page where we're setting up EPUB resources and information on all upcoming webinars, including um, the registration links. And we post the PowerPoints as soon as we've got them finalized. And we post the videos as soon as we've got our hands on those. So you can go to BIT dot ly slash epub dash atn for all of that good information. Um, and one last thing before we get started, next week's webinar is going to be on reading epub with screen readers and I will be emailing out that registration link today or you can get it on the above mentioned website. Oh, sorry, forgot one thing. Uh, if you at any point you have any trouble seeing the bottom of your zoom screen, just click on view options in the top middle of your Zoom screen to change your Zoom ratio. All right, with that said, I'm going to hand it over to our presenter, Joseph Polizotto, and let him introduce himself. And we are also joined by Richard Orm of DAISY again today, and he may pop in from time to time with comments or questions. And so I'm gonna hand it over to you two guys. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Joseph Polizotto. I'm the alternate media supervisor at UC Berkeley. And in this webinar, uh, we're gonna be covering some of the common EPUB reading systems that explore how students with dyslexia and reading disabilities can read EPUB. And um, Richard, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name's Richard Orm. I'm from the DAISY Consortium and I'll be supporting uh, Joseph with, I hope, some helpful comments and questions as we go through. I've also done a couple of the demonstrations. Great. Well, as you, as many of you know, uh, the student, the category of students with learning disabilities uh, occupies the greatest statistical category of uh, students who are currently served in disability services offices um, in higher ed. Uh, a recent statistic um, that I found sh uh, showed that there are about 200,000 students with a specific learning disability who are served in higher ed. And some of the challenges that students in this category can face while reading texts involve uh, processing texts, uh, decoding the letters and sounds of words, uh, learning new vocabulary, uh, organizing the information that they find in reading, uh, recalling what they've read, and uh, staying focused while reading. And um, as this whole webinar series is intended to do, we're going to be focusing on what specifically the EPUB format offers uh, students. And in this webinar, um, as we mentioned, uh, we're going to be focusing on students with learning disabilities and how they can benefit from the EPUB format. Um, specifically, the EPUB format can be of great benefit for these students because, uh, first, first of all, the EPUB format is the standard 
digital format for textbooks. And there are some cases in which uh, our students would prefer to have the ability to navigate the whole book um, rather than individual files of, of a book, say, broken up into chapters. Um, so that can provide a, a benefit. Another benefit will be that some students will want to use the EPUB on a variety of platforms or, or user files on a variety of platforms. And nowadays, there are a variety of reading systems that support EPUB, and we'll be looking at some of them. Uh, finally, another advantage of the EPUB format is that since it's based upon the web technologies um, as outlined by the W3C, uh, there are a lot of ways in which an EPUB book can become a lot more interactive for students than what they're typically used to. So for instance, say, um, zooming in on an image that say is rendered as SVG or an embedded video, um, or using the rich hyperlinks that are available um, in, in an EPUB to jump to a page or jump to a footnote. Um, these will be very beneficial for our students. Now, um, with, with this transition to EPUB, um, our students with learning disabilities need to be aware of how to access them using the common reading systems that they're used to. Uh, many students in this category will typically use um, specialized formats like um, Kurzweil. Uh, many still do use PDFs. Um, and uh, EPUB is still like a newcomer on the block when it comes to serving students um, with, with learning disabilities. So we need to focus on how these students can do things that they're used to doing in their other reading systems. For instance, how to navigate and search the text, how to use text-to-speech or read aloud, how to focus on vocabulary and look up the words in the dictionary, uh, how to highlight and annotate relevant passages, and then also how to review the content that they've, that they've annotated or highlighted. One of the common themes that will come up in conversations around EPUB is how well does the EPUB uh, reading system support navigation to page numbers? Um, if there's a print equivalent of the EPUB book, uh, some EPUBs will have the print page numbers embedded in them. And um, with, for students, this can be a great functionality um, since uh, it enables them to stay on the same page as uh, other students in the class. And so we mentioned here just a few EPUB reading systems that we're aware of that, that do support the page navigation, such as Vital Source Bookshelf, Microsoft Edge, and Dolphin Easy Reader. Richard, did you want to mention a couple others that I may have left out? Um, yeah, there are others like uh, digital editions from uh, Adobe and Redshelf. This supports page navigation as well. You will find EPUBs that don't have print page navigation in them. These could be older EPUBs where it wasn't adopted and the publisher didn't have the technology at that time. And it may be that the publication is something where there isn't a print equivalent copy and therefore the page numbers aren't in there. But we know it's an important feature and publishers are increasingly just putting it in by default. Another important feature of EPUB that's worth remembering when you're working with students with learning disabilities is that sometimes there may be multiple disabilities uh, that students have, or sometimes students um, with a reading impairment may, may want to make um, visual adjustments, like uh, being able to change the text size or change the character spacing of, of letters, um, in, of the letters in the word. Uh, being able to adjust the spacing between lines can also help with tracking, keep paying attention to the line that one's reading. Uh, many EPUB reading systems uh, support this sort of functionality. For, for instance, Voice Dream Reader, Dolphin Easy Reader, and Capti Voice. Um, as an alternate media specialist myself, one of the things that I am always keeping um, abreast of is just what amount of support the various reading systems um, offer on a, on a number of levels. So with the, with the kind of reading system features that my students are interested in, I wanna know which, which reading system supports this or that feature. So for instance, um, on this slide, I'm showing a grid that has 
eight of the reading systems that uh, we'll be looking at today as, as popular reading systems for students with LD. Um, and uh, we have a, uh, a row on the top that just shows some of the reading system features that we mentioned are really helpful for students with learning disabilities. And a green check mark indicates that there's a level of support in that reading system for, for that feature. And an X indicates that there currently isn't support. So for example, if we look at one column, uh, the second column, EPUB page navigation, uh, we have shown here um, three reading systems on our grid that support that feature, such as uh, Microsoft Edge, Vital Source Bookshelf, and Dolphin Easy Reader. Um, I'd also like to mention uh, when, when doing this type of exercise of analyzing which re EPUB reading systems support the features that your students are looking for, to check out the EPUB, the BISG, um, the support grid uh, that is uh, being um, compiled and, and worked on uh, actively by the reading system work group. Um, Richard, would you like to say something about that? The reading system working group is looking at reading systems, reading apps, uh, and we evaluate each of the uh, apps using a protocol that's been developed together with people with reading disabilities uh, and the specialist organizations. And in that, we basically look to see whether or not the features such as you see on this page uh, are supported by the reading system. And what's great is that we're able to put information up against uh, each of the uh, reading apps and, and make that available to you. And there's a simplified roundup of it. Um, and also we engage with the uh, developers uh, of the different reading apps and, and they're improving their apps to make sure that these missing features are improved. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, single out uh, one of the reading systems that's especially popular in higher ed for students with learning disabilities, and that's Kurzweil 3000. Um, currently, many of our students who are using Kurzweil are, are using the, um, one of the, the versions of, of Kurzweil to access their, their files. And um, I, I'm happy to say that Kurzweil does support the opening of, of EPUBs. Um, in its PC version and also in its web license version, or also known as the Universal Library. Um, students who are on a mobile device and who also have access to the web license of Kurzweil can access their account via a browser. And when they do so um, in the Universal Library, uh, an EPUB can be opened just as an EPUB, and there is support for highlighting, uh, navigation, uh, dictionary lookup and note taking and extracting notes to highlights. So many of the features that our students are interested in using when they use Kurzweil um, are available now uh, when the students use the Universal Library. Um, if you have students who do not have a web license of Kurzweil and who are using a PC and um, want to uh, access their EPUB, they can currently open the EPUB in the PC version um, and it supports, uh, the Kurzweil for PC version supports read aloud, uh, dictionary lookup, text reflow, um, and changing the background color. But to be able to do the things like um, highlighting and annotation uh, and extracting to a study guide, uh, Alt Media Specialists will want to save the EPUB as a KES file in the Kurzweil for PC program. And then uh, they can um, share the KES file with their students. And um, another thing to add is that when saving the EPUB as a KES file, uh, Alt Media Specialists may want to decide to separate the EPUB, which is the entire book, uh, into separate chapter KES files. So um, just a few tips to wrap up the discussion about EPUB and Kurzweil is uh, we would recommend currently to use the Universal Library uh, to deliver your EPUBs to students as that is the version of Kurzweil that now supports some of the more um, common features of Kurzweil that students are used to, like highlighting um, and note taking. Um, and as we mentioned, uh, when, when necessary, if you don't have a web license to save the EPUB as a KES file. 
So with that, I'd like to now transition and give you a, a demonstration of some of the reading systems that we've mentioned. Uh, we're going to start with Kurzweil. Kurzweil 3000 is a scan and read program available on the Mac and Windows operating systems. The web license of Kurzweil 3000 provides a way for students to read text in a web browser, which students can access on any device. The web interface of Kurzweil lets students open EPUBs and access the rich Kurzweil features that they are accustomed to, such as highlighting, annotation, and creation of study guides. When using the web interface of Kurzweil, students must add the EPUB to their Universal Library folder, which is a cloud storage system for Kurzweil users. Students can add EPUBs from Google Drive, their Bookshare account, or from their local computer. Another way students can add EPUBs to the Universal Library is to open the EPUB in the Kurzweil for Windows program on their desktop and then save the EPUB to their Universal Library. Students can access the structure of an EPUB by using the bookmarks menu in the web interface. The page numbers that are listed refer to Kurzweil's own page numbering method, not the page numbers in the EPUB itself. On the top left of the interface, students may wish to access the thumbnail viewer in the document view menu for easier navigation. Also in the document view menu, students can adjust the background color and zoom in on the text in the EPUB, which Kurzweil represents as an image. To begin read aloud, students can click the play button on the top of the interface. Families applies to your teaching in each of the content areas in it. Adjustments to the text-to-speech voice, students can use the audio options menu on the top left of the interface. Students can change the voice and the reading speed. To access the dictionary, students can click at the beginning of a word they wish to look up, open the references menu in the top right of the interface, and then click Dictionary. A pop-up window with the definition will appear, and students can click play to hear the definition. Instruction. Noun. The students can highlight their EPUBs by clicking on the Highlights menu on the left of the interface. There they can select from eight different colors and can assign a name to each highlighter color from the Customize Highlighter menu. To delete a highlight, students can select the eraser icon from the highlighters menu and then drag across the highlighted text. Students can add sticky notes and text notes to the EPUB by going to the document notes menu on the left side of the interface. Students can adjust the text formatting they wish to use when making their notes. To delete a note, students will need to click on the Delete Note button in the Document Note menu and then click on the note. Once students have added all their highlights or notes in the text, they can create a study guide by clicking on the Extract Notes and Highlights Options, menu, options button from the Highlighters menu. Students can click on the Advanced button to determine which notes and highlighter colors they wish to extract and how they would like to order them. Kurzweil will then open an extracted outline KES document in the web interface, which students can edit and save to their Universal Library account or save to their Google Drive. Okay, so um, that was a demonstration of the Kurzweil 3000 web license version um, when accessing an EPUB. 
Yeah, Joseph, yeah. I've been using that particular product with a whole variety of EPUBs that I've got from various sources, from Bookshare and from uh, publishers uh, from lots of different places. Uh, whilst you don't have some of the uh, benefits of EPUB, such as the uh, reflow and the ability to customize the font, I found that the features of um, CurseFile that you were demonstrating so well there are all working very reliably. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I think it's, it's worth keeping in mind, as Richard mentioned uh, earlier, that with some of the features that we're talking about, like that EPUB offers specifically as um, like a really neat feature like uh, reflow. Um, a lot of the demonstrations that we're going to be showing you today, they, they currently stand as what the, what the, what is available at the current time. And so I would expect that within the next year, if we were doing this webinar, you may find that there will be differences um, to how EPUB plays in different reading systems. But yes, I agree. I think it certainly, um, uh, for a student who needs to have access to the text and have read aloud uh, and use the reading system features that they're used to in Kurzweil for PC, the, the web license offers uh, some of the, the support that they're used to. Joseph, I have one Kurzweil question for you. Mm -hmm. Does Kurzweil retain the alternate text descriptions when you pull in an EPUB that actually has the alternate text descriptions? Mm, yes, that's a good question. Um, in my experience, uh, no, it does not. Uh, so that would be something that you would want to you would want to look at in um, in how you could provide that for the student. I would recommend um, perhaps one of the other reading systems for the moment. Joseph, that's my experience as well. You mentioned that these EPUB reading systems are in development and we're having good discussions with our friends at Kurzweil around uh, issues just like that. So I'd expect that be something that could change quite soon. Thank okay. you. That's all of the Kurzweil questions for now. Okay, so now I'd like to uh, transition and talk about another popular reading system and um, scan and read program called Read and Write. Uh, many of our students, uh, if they're not using Kurzweil, uh, the DSO office, the uh, DSO will, will offer Read and Write by text help. And um, Read and Write has a Chrome uh, extension that uh, also ha allows students to open up an EPUB in the Chrome browser. Uh, and so we're gonna be demonstrating that now. Read and Write is a popular scan and read assistive technology program that is available on the Mac OS and Windows operating systems. The program also can integrate into a student's Google Chrome or Microsoft 365 account. Students who have access to Read and Write for Google Chrome may open their EPUBs in Read and Write's EPUB reader. To activate this reader, students must first have installed TextHelp's PDF reader and must have set Read and Write for Google Chrome as their preferred app for opening EPUBs. In Read and Write's EPUB Reader, students may access the EPUB's table of contents from the toolbar on the top left of the interface. Read and Write lets students choose whether they want to use the original EPUB formatting or make visual adjustments to the font. To make visual adjustments to the text, students must first click on the settings menu on the right of the toolbar and select either book style with user style or user style only from the book style drop down menu. Students can also change the background color from the settings menu. If students select user style from the book style menu, they can now change the font type size, color, and alignment from the font options menu. To begin reading the EPUB, students can press the play button on the toolbar. Supporting children's development and learning. Students can also activate the click to speak feature on the toolbar, which will allow them to begin reading from a specific point in the text. In this video, George S. Morrison, Ed D. Professor of Earth. Students can adjust the text-to-speech voice and the speech rate from the settings menu.
Read and Write's EPUB viewer offers the same study skills that Read and Write users are accustomed to, such as highlights, collect highlights, vocabulary builder, fact finder, and more. Students should turn on the study skills mode to have access to these features. Now when students click on a word, they will see a pop-up window with an array of options. For instance, students can select the dictionary lookup icon and listen to a word's pronunciation. Adjective, doing something as a job. Students may also choose a highlight color after selecting a word or passage of the text. After highlighting multiple items, students can extract these highlights in different ways. In the middle of the toolbar, students can click on the Collect Highlights button, which will allow them to export the highlights to a study guide in Google Docs. The Collect Highlight Highlights Settings menu lets students choose what to name the Google Doc, how to organize the highlights, and which highlighter colors to extract. Students can also create a vocabulary study guide based on the words that they have highlighted in the text. To do this, students can click on the Vocabulary Tools button in the menu. Read and Write will create a Google Doc with a table containing the word, the definition, a picture, and an area for notes. To delete a highlight, students can select the highlight, click on the Remove Highlights button, and select OK from the pop-up menu. To add notes, students must first toggle the annotations mode on the toolbar. They can then click where they would like to insert their note and a pop-up window will appear. Students can then enter their note and press OK. A push pin icon will appear in the EPUB to indicate where the note is located. To delete a note, students can simply click on the note icon in the text, and then click on the trash can icon in the pop-up menu. Okay, so there's a demo of the Read and Write for Google Chrome EPUB Reader. Uh, Don, do we have any questions regarding Read and Write? Uh, yes. Do you happen to know um, what does Read and Write cost per student? Is there a free version? Does the free version open up EPUB? Um, yeah. So um, regarding the cost, so that can be something that maybe we can share after the webinar. I'm currently um, not familiar with what their pricing structure is, but um, it's my understanding that regardless of which license model you purchase with Read and Write. Uh, you, you do get um, all of the programs as a bundle. So whether it's just a year license, uh, site license, um, individual license, you're, you're, um, you're, you're able to access the Google Chrome extension for Read and Write, which includes the set of tools like the PDF reader and the EPUB reader. So if you have text help at all, if you have Read and Write at all, you'll be able to access the EPUB reader. But as for the price, I, I can get back about that. Okay, and then someone just chimed in, does Read and Write Gold support EPUB? And of course, that's what you were just, you were demonstrating an EPUB in Read and Write, correct? Correct. Okay, and somebody's curious, um, does your particular college use Kurzweil or Read and Write? And if both, which do you find more popular among your students? So our campus uses Kurzweil 3000. Um, and uh, so that's the format that we use uh, most often with our students with learning disabilities. Um, although uh, we are aware of the nice features that Read and Write for Google Chrome offers, um, it's a nice uh, option that students have available to them. Also, if they don't have a text help license, um, the, the read aloud features that are available, um, like in Google Docs with, with Read and Write for Google Chrome, that's available whether you have a license or not. So in some cases, if students are really using Google Docs a lot and they want text-to-speech in the Google Doc, um, 
we might show them how to use um, the read and write extension. Thank you. Joseph, I think that read and write uh, for educational staff, there's a license that allow you to try out all the features for free. You can just go on their website and uh, apply for that. That's right. So as, ed as educators, as uh, specialists who work in a disability service office, we are entitled to an educator's license of, of read and write. Um, and yes, like you say, um, that would allow you the ability to to download Read and Write for PC, Read and Write for Mac, uh, to install the Read and Write extension for Google Chrome or for Microsoft Edge, and try out all these rich features. So with that, I'd like to transition now and talk about a, yet another reading system that is popular for opening up EPUBs, and that's on the Mac OS platform, which is Mac OS's native books app. Uh, so I'd like to transition to that. When you open an EPUB in iBooks, the EPUB is loaded into Apple's iBooks library. The library screen displays all of the books you have purchased in the iTunes store or have sideloaded into iBooks. The dictionary lookup feature in iBooks works simply by clicking on a word. A pop-up window appears in line with the selected text, showing the definitions available from your selected dictionaries. Students can click the More link to find more information about a word. To highlight a word or sentence in iBooks, simply select the text and iBooks will display a drop-down menu with six different types of highlighters to choose from, including an underline highlight option. Note-taking in iBooks works the same way as highlighting. Simply select the word or passage you wish to annotate and a pop-up window will appear. Then select the Add Note option. The text will now be highlighted and a sticky note will appear next to the text where you can insert your annotation. To remove a highlight or note, click on the highlighted text and select Remove Highlight or Remove Note. To view all of your highlights and notes, click on the Show Notes button on the top left corner of iBooks. The Notes panel will open up on the left hand side of the text. If you want to add notes to your highlights, you can do so in the Notes panel by clicking in the Add Note area underneath the highlighted text. If you want to create a document that contains all of your highlights and notes, open the Notes panel, select all the notes, and click Copy or Command plus C. Then open a new document in Apple's Notes application. Paste your highlights and notes into the Notes app. To bookmark a page, press the Bookmarks button in the bottom in the top right corner of iBooks or press Command plus D. The bookmarks menu will then display the section of the, I, of the book and the iBooks page number where the bookmark was made. To hear the text read out loud in iBooks, students can go to the Edit menu and select the Start Speaking option. Once the speech starts, students will need to manually turn each page to follow along. Another way to hear text read out loud is to select text and press the speak selection shortcut key which on my Mac is control plus spacebar. Like Renee, you are preparing to be a highly qualified and effective early childhood professional who teaches children from birth to age 8. You are going to work with families and the community to bring high quality education. Vital Source Bookshelf Okay, so um, with the, uh, here we go, uh, with the Books app for Mac OS, as we demonstrated, there are a lot of the features that we talked about already, like highlighting, annotation. You can even select all the comment, uh, all the notes and highlights that you've made in the notes panel and export them or copy them to a, uh, the notes app. Um, one of the features that I'll hear many of our students saying that um, they would like to see improved in the Books app is uh, what I demonstrated at the end, which is uh, the Speak Screen feature. So um, with our, our students, uh, they, they will mention that they'd like to be able to see the text highlighted as it's being read out loud. Uh, so another um, option for that would then be to 
Um, you could potentially have students who have an MP3 version of the EPUB file, even though it's, uh, well, it's not going to solve that exact problem of having the text highlighted, but they could have the uh, MP3 pl file playing as they're hearing the EPUB, or you could, um, if a student really wanted text highlighting, use a different reading system. And this is where the uh, understanding of, of which reading systems support the various features really comes in, into play. Um, students who don't need read aloud, but who would like the highlighting and annotation may find the, the Mac OS um, books app, which is completely free, uh, fine. Uh, Richard, would you like to make any comments about that? Okay, um, I did also, yeah. Um, so I don't have any iBook specific questions, um, but there is one. Um, would you mind going down your list of eight um, demos here and telling us which of those are free? I know you mentioned iBooks is free. Sure, so um, the uh, free apps are books. Uh, Vital Source Bookshelf is also free. Uh, Bookshelf is the, the platform that works uh, with the vital source delivered content, uh, but students who don't who haven't purchased a vital source uh, a book at, at vital source can download the bookshelf app for free and create an account and bookshelf allows you to sideload epubs or open an epub that's on your desktop in the vital source application and then use some of the features like read aloud um, that they want uh, the rich features that vital source offers like highlighting and annotation those are only available when students have purchased the EPUB via Vital Sources website, but it is a free app. Um, uh, the next free app is uh, Microsoft Edge, uh, which is the default EPUB reading system on the PC. Uh, Captive Voice is another free application. Um, there's a free and premium version of Captive Voice. Uh, the free version does allow you to open up EPUB EPUBs but, and, and use read aloud, uh, but to be able to see the images in the EPUB um, and to be able to do things like highlighting and annotation in, uh, in Captive Voice, you'll need the pre premium version, which is a subscription-based uh, plan. Um, and Dolphin Easy Reader is also free, and that's on both um, the iOS and Android. Uh, since you mentioned the operating systems, Joseph, maybe it's helpful to say that Books is available not only for Mac OS, but for iOS. And Vital Source Bookshelf, there are apps for Mac OS, Windows, iOS, and Android. Those are all free. And as you mentioned, Easy Reader is Android and iOS. Um, so the, the references to the platforms here these are the ones where we've done recordings of the demos, but the availability of the apps is a bit broader. Yes. So next we're gonna be demonstrating the Mac OS version of Vital Source Bookshelf, which as, as Richard just mentioned, um, also exists on the PC and um, also on an iOS device, iPhone or iPad. And Android. And Android cross-platform. Vital Source Bookshelf is a cross-platform EPUB reading system which students can use to read titles purchased through the Vital Source store. Students must log in to their Vital Source account to view EPUBs in the Vital Source Bookshelf app. The EPUBs they have purchased or sideloaded will appear in their bookshelf library. The EPUB's table of contents is located in the menu on the left side of the bookshelf interface. Students can quickly scan the book and jump to a desired section. There is also a go to page feature for navigating directly to a page. On the bottom right of the interface, there is a reader options menu, which students can use to increase the text size. To activate Read Aloud, students can press a shortcut or click on the Read Aloud icon near the bottom right of the interface. On the bottom of the screen, students will then see a bar which contains the Read Aloud playback controls and the settings menu. To adjust the voice that is used on a Mac OS device, 
students will need to change the voice within the System Preferences menu. To begin reading from a specific part of the text, students can click on a word and select Read Aloud from here. Born in Moravia, then a province of the Ch To look up words in the EPUB, students can simply click on the word and select Look Up from the pop-up menu. Students can highlight the text by selecting a passage and choosing their preferred color from the pop-up menu. To delete the highlight, they can click on the highlighted text again and select the Delete Highlight icon. To facilitate highlighting, Vitalsource Bookshelf also has a Fast Highlights mode, which allows students to highlight items simply by selecting text. Students can annotate their EPUB by selecting text and typing in the Add Note area of the pop-up menu. Once a note is added, students will also see a note icon in the margin of the text. To view all of their notes, students can then click on the Notebook panel where their notes and highlights can be organized in a variety of ways. The Manage Highlighters menu gives students the option of creating their own highlighter colors as well. Additionally, students can search for words that they have highlighted or written in their notes. An impressive feature of the Vital Source Bookshelf app is its Figures panel. The Figures panel organizes all of the illustrations in the EPUB, thus making it easier for students to refer to important diagrams. Okay, so that is the Vital Source for Bookshelf Mac OS version. All right, Joseph, can you change the speed for reading the text in Vital Source? Yes. Um, so, as as demonstrated in the video, there is a uh, the way that you access the text to speech settings uh, when using Vital Source Bookshelf is to go to the System Preferences menu, uh, which is built into your Mac, uh, and when you're in the accessibility or system preferences menu and the accessibility menu, there's a speech menu where you can adjust the voice and the reading speed. The ability to customize how the voice is reading out the book, that will vary between apps, won't it, Joseph? And some of them, you have to go into the operating system to change the voice, the speed, the pitch. Others, it's right there within the app and makes it super easy to adjust it as you go along. Sometimes you can even adjust it whilst it's reading. Correct, yes. And um, I wanted to also point out that with um, particularly the the Vital Source Bookshelf app and um, the Captive Voice uh, browser version on the Mac OS, um, Captive Voice, uh, these apps do uh, can open up in the browser and you can see all of the voices that you have available on your operating system already installed, um, which makes it really nice if you have a really high, high quality text-to-speech voice that you've downloaded on your, on your operating system, you can use it. So it gives you a little, um, a little bit more flexibility, whereas some other reading systems, you're, you're stuck with whatever the reading um, system voices provided are. So now I'd like to transition to a demonstration of VoiceStream Reader, which is a very popular mobile reading app. It reads um, lots of different formats, including EPUB. Um, it exists on the iOS and Android platforms. And today we're gonna be uh, giving a demonstration of the iOS version. VoiceStream is a mobile app available on the iOS and Android operating systems. This app allows students to add EPUBs from a variety of sources, including the popular Bookshare library. Students can view EPUBs in VoiceStream in two ways plain text layout, and rich text layout. 
While the rich text layout presents the EPUB with its original formatting and pictures, the plain text layout lets students make additional changes to the visual settings and lets students add highlights or notes. To navigate the EPUB and VoiceStream, students can open the Locations menu on the bottom left of the interface. The Table of Contents is organized by the heading structure in the EPUB and students can select the depth of the heading level they wish to navigate. Students can double tap on text to begin text-to-speech playback. This chapter we discuss public policy and current issues as they influence early childhood education. To adjust the text-to-speech playback, there is the audio settings menu in the top right of the interface. This menu lets students change the voice, change the speed, and even allows pronunciation adjustments. In the Advanced Settings menu, students can also change the length of the pause at the end of a sentence. When students are viewing the EPUB in plain text layout, there are a number of study skills options available when they long press on some text. To look up a word in the dictionary, Students can select Define from the pop-up menu. In the iOS app, the students' preferred dictionaries will then appear in another pop-up menu. Students can also add notes and highlights in VoiceStream. To highlight a word or passage, students can long press and drag their finger to the end of a passage. Then they can select Highlight. The Visual Settings menu lets students change the highlighter color and the position of the highlighter, either on the text or on the margin. To annotate the text, students will use the same method as highlighting. Students will long press on the word or a selected passage and then select Note from the pop-up menu. The on-screen keyboard will appear for the student to begin composing the note and students should not forget that they can also annotate verbally by tapping on the dictation button on the lower right of the on-screen keyboard. A note icon will appear next to the text. To delete a highlighter note, students can tap on the highlighted text and tap delete from the pop-up menu. To review all their notes, students can tap on the Locations menu again and select the Highlighters tab, which will show the highlighted note text, the notes, and the percentage of the book where the highlight or note appears in the EPUB. Finally, VoiceStream lets students export their notes and highlights from the Document menu, which is on the top left of the interface. When selecting the Export Highlights option, students will see a variety of features, including exporting to the Notes app in iOS. The exported highlights will show students the section where they made their highlights or notes, the text that they highlighted or annotated, and the notes themselves. Okay. Well, um, as you can see, we have uh, three more reading system apps that we have demonstrations uh, for, and we would uh, love for you to be able to, to see those and to review those and how they can benefit your students. Um, uh, if you'd like to review them later, you can go to our link at the bottom of this slide. Uh, we have a YouTube channel where all of these videos that we've already demonstrated and those that we haven't had a chance to get to are available. Um, before we wrap up, we would like to just men make mention of a few of the things that, a uh, few of the challenges that are currently, um, that currently exist that are um, for EPUB adoption. And, and some of those are things like uh, the ability for EPUB reading systems to support mathematical content. So um, at the present time, there isn't a, a reading system uh, that we can recommend that would support the reading of mathematics out loud for students um, with learning disabilities. Uh, so if, a, if, a, if you are in touch with uh, an app developer, 
Uh, we highly recommend that you would talk up the, the need for students with learning disabilities to access mathematical content. Um, another thing that we've mentioned already is uh, some, some, some reading systems don't support page navigation. And this is a feature that our students really want to be able to stay, stay on the same page as their, their peers. And then uh, for another thing, um, it's great if we can create EPUBs ourselves in the event that we have students who need the EPUB, yet um, we have a different format. And so some of our students um, who want an EPUB may need, need for us to create one. And um, if you'd like more training about how to create EPUBs, you can look out for the, the list of sessions that will be available eventually at Accessing Higher Ground. And finally, uh, we'd like to just wrap up by, by making a summary about some of the things that our students with learning disabilities uh, need uh, when, when accessing a, an EPUB reading system. And that is uh, the ability to have the text read out loud, study skills like highlighting and annotation, dictionary lookup. Um, keep in mind that reading systems offer a variety of, of these features and some may support some of the features better than others. So with that in mind, you always wanna focus on uh, your students and what, what kind of devices they are using and what they prefer uh, to, to match the reading system that will go, go with their needs. And uh, we would encourage you to communicate with the publishers of textbook content who are now increasingly uh, creating more EPUBs and also the app developers that support the opening of EPUBs. And if you're really involved in creating alternate formats, we would recommend that you um, get involved with our EPUB test group that can, that is, as Richard mentioned, is constantly testing the EPUB reading systems for support of the EPUB 3 specification. So with that, I'd like to thank you um, on behalf of Richard. I thank you for your attention and um, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Don if we have any other questions. Um, and, we do. Yeah. Let's see if we can get through 10 questions in six minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's some simple ones in here. So um, I'll start off with the voice stream one. Um, will voice stream work on laptop or PC? I know you mentioned it works on Android and iOS, but what about laptop or PC? Uh, currently there is not a, a laptop or a PC version of voice stream reader. It's All just right. a iOS or Android. Great. Uh, another attendee commented that uh, you you uh, that that there's going to be EPUB sessions. There is yet one more great reason to go to accessing higher ground. So thank you. Um, can you read off or show that Bitly link again so people can see the uh, YouTube um, uh, of all of your videos? Yes, and I'll read it out loud. It's HTTP colon forward slash forward slash bit dot Lee L Y forward slash EPUB lowercase E P U B hyphen L D for learning disabilities. All right. And uh, let's see, let's go back to the beginning at the start of the webinar that there was mention of Adobe digital editions. Um, does, does Adobe Adi digital editions read out loud? Uh, no, it does not. Okay, next question um, regarding Bookshare. I thought that students needed to have a print disability in order to access Bookshare books. Even though students with ADHD could benefit from digital books, they didn't qualify for Bookshare membership. Is the publisher's move to the EPUB format allowing all types of learning disabilities access to the files? Okay, well, um, the um, questioner is, uh, is correct. Uh, Bookshare as well as uh, Learning Ally do place a restriction on who has access to their libraries. Uh, so currently it's only students with a quote, print disability, uh, so visually impaired, uh, mobility, uh, dyslexia, or specific reading disability, dysgraphia. Students with ADD or ADHD um, are not typically provided with access to Bookshare accounts. Um, the question about the publishers creating more EPUBs, um, that's sort of an independent question from, from Bookshare's library and how it operates. Um, uh, maybe Richard would like to talk about publishers move to, to EPUB. 
Well, we often talk at the DAISY Consortium about the concept of inclusive publishing, which is that the books that are born digital are also born accessible for everyone. Uh, and that's not just the work of the publishers, actually, it's the distribution chain right through to the apps uh, or websites that would be used uh, by the students. And the great thing about an inclusive concept is that the student does not have to have a disability or declare a disability to be able to make use of that EPUB. And increasingly on the reading systems that the uh, publishers um, uh, are distributing through, like Vital Source, like Red Shelf, but uh, includes many more, they have um, features that in the past would have been considered to be accessibility provisions, but now are just good practice. So the ability to enlarge um, and uh, choose a font, to change the colors, to have read aloud, these are features that you'll see in mainstream uh, reading apps. So yeah, that transition to EPUB to true digital publishing is unlocking uh, features that are beneficial to uh, the sorts of students that were mentioned just there uh, without them having to go to special libraries. Thank you. Does Edge, Microsoft Edge, as uh, the internet browser on Windows 10, have native EPUB reading features? Does it have bookshelf features or just reading features? And where are they in the browser menus? Okay. So Joseph, you've, you've made a video on this, I think. And then I can fill yeah. in the bits that-, that Yeah, so, so uh, yes, Microsoft Edge, um, as we mentioned, is the default e uh, EPUB application if you're running Windows 10. Uh, if you're running Windows 7 or Windows 8, um, you do not have Microsoft Edge. Um, it, uh, Microsoft Edge opens EPUBs and it would be the application, say, that would open up if a student were to purchase an, a book via the Windows Store. Um, so uh, if a student has an e any EPUB that's on their Windows 10 uh, device, uh, PC or my, uh, Surface, um, they would be able to use Edge to read the EPUB. So uh, you mentioned the Microsoft Bookstore there, but as you say, if you go to a university uh, library system and you choose the EPUB from that as your download, uh, when you then get that EPUB, it can open up um, in your uh, Edge system if it's an unprotected EPUB. Um, it doesn't have a bookshelf as such, but you can collect the EPUBs that maybe you've got from Access Text Network uh, or from Bookshare or that have been sent to you by the publisher you can put, arrange those in a folder and then as you open those EPUBs, they'll just open right there within, um, within Edge. You don't have to do anything. Uh, and then the, the video that uh, is part of the, um, the YouTube playlist and that is linked to, that will show you the features that exist within uh, Edge for EPUB support. Interesting things like the ability to change colors, fonts, read aloud and so on. Great. Um, let's see if we can just fit in one more question before we wrap up. Are all of these platforms that you've shown accessible via keyboard navigation for students who are blind and visually impaired? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would refer you to the EPUB uh, support grid that we were mentioning earlier that goes into um, a much deeper dive of which reading systems support um, uh, screen reader users um, like VoiceOver for Mac OS or iOS and JAWS or NVDA. Um, I can speak just from, from experience in, in testing with uh, Mac OS uh, as VoiceOver that um, Books is accessible, the native EPUB reader. Also, Vital Source Bookshelf for Mac OS um, is very accessible via um, yeah, using VoiceOver. Richard, would you like to mention any of the others? Um, lack of support for a screen reader would be the exception uh, rather than something that's common. Uh, where you would find uh, poor screen reader support would be an app that's been designed specifically for someone uh, with dyslexia like Kurzweil. That's more designed for someone to be using um, visually. But as you say, lots of the others like um, Edge and Books and Vital Source Bookshelf and Easy Reader, they can either be used through the keyboard if it's a desktop solution or through gestures on a touch screen together with the screen reader um, if you're using a 
uh, a device like a smartphone or a tablet. And uh, as Dawn mentioned, the uh, next um, webinar, this is probably your segue over to your uh, closing piece, Dawn, uh, will focus on access for uh, blind students. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. And that will be a wonderful opportunity. All right. I don't want to hold you guys up any longer. Thank you both Joseph and Richard so much for taking the time to share this information with all of us. And thank you to everyone who attended today. I hope that you're able to attend all the future webinars or watch the videos after the fact. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.